Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. And today I am going to be talking a little bit about my process with this project that I have tackled this week. This was a last minute gift for my sister's birthday. And if you're seeing this sissy, happy birthday. It has taken me approximately four days to finish this piece. And this specific video happens to only tell about three of those four days. The first day was me sketching out my piece and putting it on Procreate so I could play around with the colors a little bit, see what colors I liked best for this piece, and also get a little feel for the composition. I really wanted a partially albino peacock because adding in that white would just be so beautiful to me. And I've seen pictures of them before and I always thought that they were absolutely gorgeous. So I sketched it out and I wanted a fan of feathers come out from behind the peacock and have them mix between the albino and the regular peacock feathers. So I sketched that out a good bit on Procreate, got the feel for it, and I would say I primed my canvas, but that would be incorrect. I tinted my canvas. My gesso magically disappeared when I needed it most. A whole gallon of it vanished. Me nor my fiance can find it. So I'm sure I will find it after all of this is said and done. Who knows? I'll let you guys know if I find it. But I took some white paint and some burnt sienna and mixed it up real good and slapped it on the canvas and concluded that I really liked the color and I was going to keep it that way and it was just going to be considered a quote unquote background. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I just put on a thick coat of blue paint and then immediately followed it with a coat of white paint. That is for me to add saturation to my color as I add the last layer of blue on there. And adding blue and white paint desaturates it. So actually adding a layer of white will give more saturation to the next layer. Bird feathers are a bit tricky in the sense that they really need to be as vibrant as possible, especially when you're dealing with a bird such as the peacock or any other kind of bird such as a macaw or a toucan or most tropical birds are very vibrant as well. And so this was a little trick that I learned to add saturation and make the bird as vibrant as possible. And don't get me wrong, my technique is absolutely horrendous and I am trying to work on that in this painting, but I am by no means a master of painting or colors. I'm still in the process of getting my feet wet with that. It's a little daunting. back to the explanation of this painting. I have actually never painted anything larger than an 11 by 14, whether that was canvas or paper. So this was an actually very daunting task for me. Painting on even a 16 by 20 seems extremely scary because any mistake you make is probably going to be extremely visible, but I made plenty of mistakes in this painting that honestly I could just cover up with some more paint and usually that's going to work out pretty fine for me. And I actually ended up doing that a couple of times. That is part of the process. You got to problem solve when things don't really turn out the way you want it to. I'd say trust the process, but when you know something's wrong, you just got to figure out a way to fix it. I guess you could consider that part of the process. And one of those problems is that green paint that I am putting on the canvas right now. It is a problem color in the most kind words possible. These paints are not as professional as I would prefer. They consider themselves professional paints. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. They're very hard to work with. 
Um, you have to add water to them just to get them workable. You get a lot of brush drag when you don't. And this particular green color that I had put down for that feather, it is extremely transparent. And you can't tell very well in the video, but if you were to see my palette, it looked like a glaze for a mosaic, like one of those window paintings that you find in like churches and stuff. That's how it looked. It did not look opaque at all. And when you slap it on the canvas, it didn't do too well either. So I ended up later on adding another green layer and sandwiched it in between these, the paint layers for this specific paint. I had another, I think it was one of my apple barrel paints, one of my cheap paints but it was just opaque enough to give that green more vibrancy and not show that horrid weird color in between that I saw in real time. The green was kind of melding with the pink background and it looked really weird so I had to fix that on the fly. Another mistake that I am forcing you to experience with me is I realized after painting the feathers on the head, I hated them. So I went through all that trouble and I'm making you watch me go through all that trouble of painting the feathers on his face and head and I'm covering it right back up with that cobalt blue I started out with. I just didn't, the texture was neat, but I did not like the blend of the paints. Just something about it, I just didn't feel like I did right. So I went back over it with cobalt blue and I tried a different method, which is closer to the feathers on his chest for the next go around with that. And while that's drying, before I can start, you know, actually fixing that problem, I have to wait for the paint to dry and so I am going through and adding that green I told you about to my feathers and just layering them to where it gives a semblance of depth because I didn't want them all just straight in a row and I didn't want there to be a consistent overlappance of these feathers looking like I was just being lazy. So I tried really hard to do layers of these feathers and have some peek out more than others and trying to draw the eye from the peacock to the right and just kind of try and draw the eye across the painting rather than in a specific spot. I don't know if this is shown in the video, but I think I forgot to film most of it, but I did end up painting the feathers that come out of his head last, very last. That was the most nerve wracking moment or moments of this entire painting because Everything else I could just paint over and fix, but those feathers went directly on top of everything else. And if I messed them up, which I thought I did at first, I didn't know what I was going to do, honestly, because I'd already painted the feathers underneath. They looked really good. I think that painting those little head feathers was a little bit harder than everything else. I've painted peacock feathers before. They did not look near as good as these. I had painted them before so I think I had a little bit of experience with how to tackle painting them and I never painted those head feathers before. I'd only just painted some little abstract peacock feathers and slapped it on some type of abstract background and called it a painting and it didn't look bad, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't really fond of that painting. And the last day, which happened to be my sister's birthday, I cleaned up my desk. I cleaned up much more prior to filming this. I just didn't want anybody seeing it. And I had done some touch-ups prior to filming and I was waiting for it to dry so that I could varnish. So I just decided to read a little bit from my new book for my brother for my birthday, which was last month. This book is 
really interesting. I don't do oil painting, and I would like to eventually, but circumstances as there may be, I can't right now. I don't have the space, and we have so many animals that if I tried to oil paint, even with those mediums that cause it to dry faster, I have a feeling that the canvas would probably have a ton of hair. I really don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to wait till I have a more dedicated space where the cats can't have access to before I actually start doing oil paintings. I feel like this book is a lot more than just for oil painters. I like it a lot so far. It really does give good explanations about preparations and talking about different types of paintings like plain air versus you know the longer paintings like the one that I have done in this go around. And now I'm putting it on my table to varnish. I'm going to be using my Gamblin varnish. I really like it. It's very thin, so it goes a long way. I don't really like those thick varnishes. They, it takes a lot and they're really, really expensive anyways. So just having something thinner that's more easily spreadable helps a lot. I varnished this one and I varnished a smaller piece and that's not gonna be shown here because I already painted that piece a while back you can go back on my Instagram it's my little cactus blossoms that I painted a few months ago I forgot to varnish them so I went ahead and did that today while I already had it out and I added a little bit more varnish because I felt like I didn't have enough to cover the space but anyways if you liked this video please like subscribe and comment what you think I should talk about next time. At some point I will be getting some canvas materials and I'm going to be talking about different canvases and how to build them and what I prefer canvases that I've built myself versus pre-bought store canvas. And that is all for today. And I hope you have a great weekend and I hope to see you next week. Hopefully I will have one out next week. But if I don't, I will see you whenever I see you. Bye.